everyone. Adam here. So was your podcast. I'm sitting down with Kate Watson, who has a new movie coming out, Killer Advice. Kate, how you doing? I'm very well. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I really appreciate you taking the time. This should be fun. Of course. Happy to. So before we get to Killer Advice, I always like to ask people how you got into your creative journey, you know, acting, writing, whatever it happens to be acting, of course, for you. So mm -hmm. when did that kind of start? I would say that it started, like most actors, very young. Um, I started out as a dancer when I was a little girl, and then that kind of grew into the world of musical theater, and I went to college for theater. Um, and when I was about 20, I moved to Los Angeles, and that was quite a while ago, and decided that this was, you know, this was the time to take on acting for film, which is a very different medium, I think, than theater. Um, but very quickly decided that it wasn't my time. Um, this was, goodness, I don't know how many years ago, but you know, it was before you could do a lot of business online. Um, mm -hmm. It was prior to the Me Too movement also. So the landscape for, for young women was very different, I have to admit. It's unfortunate. Um, and I just didn't feel like it was the right time for me to go at this alone. You definitely need a huge support system around you when you when you venture into this world because it can be quite heartbreaking. So I put my stuff in storage and kind of put um, my acting career path on hold for a little bit and decided that I needed to venture out and kind of find myself and gathered the tools that I needed to uh, come back to this at the right time. I kind of always knew it was something that was going to eventually, you know, um, come to flourishing, but I needed some time to figure out when that was. Um, so I went off and had a career in business for about a decade. Oh. So I worked for several companies in cosmetics and fashion. I traveled the world being a spokesperson. I did a lot of live television. Um, so it kind of always brought me back to being in front of the camera, oddly enough, <laughs> to kind of, you know, it was like this attraction to a camera that I couldn't, I couldn't let go of. But I did learn a ton um, in the world of business, which is you know, it is um, invaluable with what I do now. And so I came back full steam and now this is my full-time career for the last three years or so. Okay. Um, but it was a, it was a bit of a, a twisted, turny journey to get here, but very grateful for it. Yeah, that is interesting because it's such a departure. It's, it's not like, oh, I didn't act, but I wrote or I directed, you know, something right. in the same kind of vein. Right, um, right. Did, did you stay based in LA for all of that? Not at all. No. And I do think that in some capacity, we are all actors to a degree, right? I mean, I think that human beings, we wear masks, whatever profession that we're in, we have to kind of, you know, determine how to navigate, you know, our work based on who we're interacting with and what we're doing. Um, but no, I, I lived in San Francisco for many years. Most of my career, I was based out of San Francisco. I, my, I, my office was in New York, so I was traveling to New York a lot. Um, I would host seminars around the country, so I would travel around the country quite a bit. Um, and it wasn't until I actually transplanted to Los Angeles with a company that I decided to move here. And so that kind of, in a weird way, brought me to LA through another, another sort of business. And then eventually I moved into acting here. Oh, that is really interesting. Yeah. And I'd have to imagine that your experience with meeting all sorts of people and the high stakes of business and all that probably helped prepare you and kind of give you that resolve to face the really tough trials. Yeah, tremendously so. I mean, I think that no matter what your age is, and we all vary in our life experience, right, based on what we've what we've gone through in our life, um, that my my greatest advice to anyone who's interested in getting into this this industry is that you have to have a very strong sense of self, and usually you acquire that with with experience, with wisdom and age, right? So, um, so to a degree, I'm very grateful that I was able to go and have this other career path and have success in that. And also realize that, you know, a lot of success and money doesn't necessarily mean that you're happy either. And that mm. you really have to kind of go with what your heart, you know, is, is telling you to do. And so that, in that sense, it's what I do now is so much more fulfilling because I was able to kind of go, yeah, that, you know, being successful in money is great, but it's not what I should be doing. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Y yeah. You're, you're not doing what your brain's telling you you should be. You're not doing something creative. Totally. Did you uh, stay in the business world when you first kind of dipped your toe back into acting or did you just jump in head first? 
It, it was, it was an ease back in because, um, you know, this is a game of millimeters, I like to say. It is a marathon. A lot of people think that you can just make that transition quickly and gain success and that these overnight successes that we see on our televisions or our silver screens, you know, came out of nowhere and got their first big break. And it doesn't happen like that. It is something that you have got to chip away at, just like any career path, truthfully. I mean, it takes time, right, to build mm -hmm. up who you are in that industry. Um, so I eased into it. So I was I was the guest host on, on Shopping Networks, selling product and being the face of companies. Um, and that was affording me a little bit of time to go out and do the auditions and get some, get some, a couple credits under my belt before I went full steam into this. I would have to imagine kind of having a career life before an acting life would also maybe take some of the pressure off Mm hmm. I, I absolutely agree with that. I think that it's unfortunate that I, I think a lot of artists, um, they identify as only being able to act. And I think, quite frankly, I think we're all capable of doing anything that we set our minds to, quite frankly. Um, I think it takes a lot of hard work. I think talent's a small portion of success. Um, but I think that, you know, being able to have experienced something else um, and have success in something else and feel like you're capable of having the corner office and, you know, and being managing people. Um, it teaches you that you are so many different things. And just because your heart isn't in something doesn't mean you can't be good at it. Um, but it is certainly a good feeling to know that you're capable of doing something else. And you don't just identify as just being an actor or just being an artist. And that's all you can do. You can do anything that you want but it's where you're really passionate and really you feel like you're your most self. That's where I think you'll be the most successful. Sure, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, so not only business and acting, but I read that you also started in dance. I did, yes. So I was, I was one of those very many young girls who get into dance early on. Um, I went to a very serious uh, ballet school. I grew up on the island of Oahu until I was about a teenager. Um, and uh, we had a very strict Russian ballet teacher. And I'm so grateful for that um, because I think that you learn so many things through dance. I mean, dance is essentially acting through body form. Um, in order to be a good dancer, you have to learn all the technique and then you have to let all of that go when you're on stage. And it's the same thing for being an actor. You have to learn all the technique and absorb everything that you can and then let that go when you're performing. Um, and also the discipline of being a good actor is the same as being a good dancer. It is, again, it's chipping away at your craft. It's chipping away by technique and perfecting that and working at it diligently. And so learning that skill set was, was extremely beneficial to what I do now. That's very cool. I, I would imagine the discipline is unreal yes. with a, a yeah. Russian Those ballet dancers, teacher. <laughs> people have no idea. It is... It is quite frankly, it is definitely an athletic thing to do. I mean, those those are athletes and very disciplined people. Absolutely, yeah. And you've also dabbled in writing a little bit. Is that something you still do? Yeah, you know, this quarantine time has kind of forced us all to to shift gears a little bit, right? Yeah. And, and so when I'm not on a set, I've got to keep those creative juices going somehow. And I've always been interested in writing. I think writing for a lot of people who don't choose it as a profession is one of those daunting tasks that you think, oh my gosh, it's going to take so much time to finish something um, or sit down and actually diligently do it. But uh, quarantine, again, it's, it's afforded me some time to actually sit there because I can't be on a set working and to actually write. So I am I'm working on a limited series right now. Oh, that's so excellent. That. Yeah. We'll yeah. be looking forward to that. <laughs> yes, more to come on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you did bring up quarantine, and I imagine being an actor that it kind of stops everything dead in its tracks, at least for a while. Yeah. yeah. The the movie of coming out, um, Killer Advice, was that film, did you manage to finish before March 2020? Because that seems to be when everything really... I know, that's when everything hit. I know, we actually shot it in July. So we okay. had already been several months into quarantine. Um, Los Angeles, where we shot the film, was not on complete lockdown quite yet. So we were able to shoot, of course, using precautionary measures. Um, everybody on set from the cast to the crew, everyone had to be extremely diligent with what they were doing, wearing masks, making sure everything was sanitized, taking temperatures, having a medic on set. So that was another added layer of, uh, <laughs> of stress per se, because sets can tend to be a little bit more stressful. Um, another added layer of stress was shooting during the pandemic. But I have to say, you know, hats off to our cast and crew for, for kind of, you know, making sure that they were putting in the work and, and being diligent so we could get through our days. 
for sure. It's, it's good you managed to make it happen because I was thinking about that as I watched the movie. I'm like, it's a, a kind of more intimate story. It's it's a family yes. and an outsider, so you don't yeah. need tons of crowd scenes and stuff. Correct. Yeah, we didn't. We were fortunate enough not to have any huge scenes that had extras um, or you know, I don't know, big big spaces that we had to take up. Um, we had a very small footprint on this film. So yeah, it is more of an intimate film. And I think that was to our benefit. Right, because it also never looked like, oh, they shot this in quarantine. You can tell because they're shooting around. It never <laughs> felt like that, so. Or you should have had a crowd and there's only like five people. <laughs> right. <laughs> really close no, no, camera we were, angles. <laughs> we were definitely lucky with this script, not having to, you know, to kind of, uh, to make make it work, um, yeah, it was certainly a script that was able we were able to pull off during quarantine. But needless to say, I mean, I my heart goes out to everyone who's been affected um, mm -hmm. via the work and and also you know all artists. I mean, right now we are just kind of getting back into the swing here in Los Angeles, and then in other places shooting. Um, but it's certainly you know it's an environment that people take very seriously, and it's um it's definitely more challenging because you have fewer days. I mean, we already had a very small amount of time on this film to shoot. Um, and those days become even shorter because a lot of that time is, you know, to make sure that your protocols are in place. So. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Um, well, we're kind of already talking about the movie. So I guess uh, let's get into how did, um, how did it cross your desk? Yeah, so um, Jared Cohen, who is a director of the film and the production company and I, we had made a, um, a film the year prior for Deadly Groom, which was another thriller for Lifetime, uh, Lifetime Network actually. And, and we had a great time on that. It was just a really, um, it was a wonderful environment working with them. This was my third film with Jared. And Jared is one of those directors that he just, he trusts actors, you know, he might nudge you one way or another, but he and I have a very trusting relationship. And so it, it's, it's a pleasure to work with him. Um, and so, yeah, so he, he gave me a call actually maybe, maybe about a week before shooting this and said, hey, do you want to read the script? Um, and I was hesitant because I, I had passed on several projects just because of quarantine and mm -hmm. it's a little scary. Um, you certainly want to work with people that you, you trust already, um, if, if you can. And uh, when I read the script, you know, it was something that I hadn't, I hadn't explored before, um, this delicate subject matter of mental health. And um, certainly, I think for lifetime standards, even a little bit more serious in tone, maybe not as uh, sensationalized, perhaps, mm -hmm. even though it's, it's definitely kind of an extreme circumstance, but, but certainly one that I, I took very seriously. Um, and I knew that this, this role itself would be a bit of a challenge. And I'm always up for a challenge as an actor. That's exciting. So, um, so yeah, so I jumped on board. We had a quick read as a cast, just of the script. And I think within a couple of days, we were already on set shooting this. So yeah, I just, I just dove in. Wow, that's excellent that I, how fast it all came together. Yes, yeah. And that, that was a good point you brought up that um, it's a little bit more serious than what you might expect because there, there's really not much levity to break the tension in it now that you mention it. <laughs> no, there's, there's really not. I mean, I think that perhaps a little bit of Eric Roberts can do that. You know, he has a little bit of zing in his character. That's true, um, yeah. There's certainly tender moments in it. And I think that the underlying current, the heartbeat of the story is really about the love that this woman has as for her family mm -hmm. um, and the ending of this fractured relationship with her daughter. And that is really the driving force throughout the thriller. But yeah, it, it for the most part, it dives in and it doesn't, it doesn't let up until the end. No, it really hits the ground running. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no time to kind of ease into the story. It just no. it does. You're about three minutes in, you're like, oh, we're there. Okay. Yeah, we're here. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so aside from the quarantine of it all and making it much more difficult, what was kind of some of the more difficult scenes to shoot? Because it's very emotional, but also gets into some physicality. Yes. Um, you know, and I, I don't think that a lot of people realize. Um, I think that unfortunately, a lot of Lifetime films, because they can be sensationalized, get this uh, this reputation of being kind of, you know, not as uh, difficult as far as the acting process is concerned. Maybe not as the, the, the level of acting isn't as... Um, as revered perhaps, um, but people have to understand that these films are shot very quickly. And when I when I say very quickly, it's um, I can equate it to what network TV would shoot an episode of TV in, which is you know 
half an hour, 43 minutes or so. And we're talking about an hour and a half. So, yeah. so you're moving at, at a breakneck speed. Um, and for these serious scenes, then that require that physicality. Um, I had to get there very, very quickly. So while they're setting up, I am getting into that mental place. I'm getting my body worked up. I'm getting that energy flowing through me. So as soon as I hear action, I pretty much get one take and then we're moving on. Oh, <laughs> so <wow. laughs> it is, yeah, we shot with two cameras. Um, if we're lucky, maybe a couple little pickups here and there on the scene. But um, for the most part, it's, you know, it's one take throughout everything and you're moving on so that you can get all of this coverage and make your days. Um, so for any actor who dives into this realm of, of filmmaking, you have to be, it's a great um, exercise, almost like a boot camp, in knowing that this is how you process material, this is how you get into your character very quickly, and then you just got to go. You got to be able to just take off as soon as you hear action. Um, and it's, it's a real testament to every actor's focus. You know, every single actor on our set was just really focused, which you was- You have to be. <laughs> awesome. You have to be. You have to be. Mm -hmm. So going back to something you mentioned before, did your theatrical training and experience, I mean, that has to help. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, again, I, 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 it's a testament to, to dance also that that mind-body connection, I think is really important, at least for me as an actor. Um, sometimes I can get to the headspace through my physicality. So if I get my body kind of moving or worked up in a situation or I know I'm gonna do a stunt or whatever it is, my emotional response will be there. From the outside in um but yeah it, I, I think that focus comes from everything i think it comes from just you know getting to know yourself and knowing how you can get into that headspace very quickly but also again with business you know having to you know being someone who's a businesswoman who takes on several different projects at a time and how do you micromanage and how do you make sure that you are you know you're you know juggling all these plates at the same time acting can feel like that you really have to know how to kind of tune out the outside volume, literally, because you'll have a crew member talking to another person over here, and then they're setting up a lighting, and then the director's talking to somebody, and you're supposed to be crying in the next scene. And as soon as you hear action, you have to do that. So how do you tune all of that out and just, you know, really zone in? Um, so yeah, focus is something that I think people don't really think about when they think about, like, what does it take to be successful on a set? It's, it's a really strong sense of focus. Yeah, and the pressure, I can imagine. <laughs> Well, maybe bit. I can't yeah. imagine. <laughs> yeah. It's the pressure, but I think that's where you have to, you have to feel comfortable. You have to decide that you're um, not necessarily fearless. And, and this is, I will a testament to like Beth's story. You'll never feel fearless. You know, I think that as human beings, and again, we're living in this time and age where so many stories are all about superheroes, right? They're infallible. They are, they've got these super natural powers that make them unhuman. Um, and fear for a human being is not something that's ever really going to go away. I think you can be confident, but still have fear within you. Um, and you have to move through fear with bravery. And that's what Beth does. You know, she's never, there's never a scene that I played her without fear. You know, fear was always inside of her somewhere, even though she might be masking it a little bit, but it was always a part of her, but she just decided to be brave and move through it. And I think that with an actor, you know, you have to work with your fear. You have to harness it and you have to accept that it's going to be there or, you know, the high pressure, the high stakes are going to be there and you're just going to work with that and move through it in spite of feeling that way. So that that's also, I guess, a little bit of that, that focus as well. Absolutely. And that does come across. Your character is always, no matter what she's doing, there's always something working in the back of her head. That always, she's... yeah. She's, she's a lot of subtext, that one. <laughs> she's yeah. got a lot. <laughs> she's got a lot underneath the surface. And that's, when I read the script um, the very first time, and I'll write notes on the side of my script, like what am I feeling when I read this, this scene? Um, I always felt uncomfortable watching, like listening to her, her, her dialogue of how she was talking and in my mind seeing her. I felt uncomfortable, I felt uneasy. And so I remember doing these scenes and just thinking, I want the audience to feel as uncomfortable as I was when I read the script in these scenes. I just want them to feel kind of sticky and gross and like, I don't know if I should be watching Beth right now because she seems so uncomfortable. It's a little unnerving, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to sugarcoat it or gloss it up or make it melodramatic in any way. Um, I wanted her just to feel uncomfortable and raw and um, kind of like she was on the edge of breaking. She was just right there, kind of teetering. That's, that's how I wanted her to feel. Yeah, that's a good way to put it is uncomfortable where it's, 
you know, it's like someone crying in public. Like you kind of want to yes. be like, hey, are you okay? But you also just kind of want to keep your distance. And Yes, yes. And we as human beings, I think it's such human nature to kind of, you know, feel like if someone is showing that much emotion to kind of go, well, but I shouldn't, I shouldn't butt in on that. I shouldn't be seeing that. That's such a um, a closeted behavior, right? Yeah. For someone, especially when you think of therapy, it's in a room. It's you know, it's very private. You don't you, you don't have anyone else listening in. Hopefully, um, and so it is kind of this thing that's very hush hush. You don't talk about it. It's kind of like it's your emotions. We kind of put that over here. And this was very much you know, the audience was in the room with me. They were experiencing all of those things with me, which is a very private thing but um but yeah we are very much like you know closeting our emotions a lot as human beings yes for sure and uh, kind of in a similar vein your co-stars not the same emotion but um i'm i'm sorry i blanked on their names but the woman yeah. who plays your kind of adversary without going into spoilers yes, Simone. Mm -hmm. yeah um she has this undercurrent of menace in every scene even when she's being nice <laughs> yes you mean the therapist <laughs> yes yes Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, sorry, um, not the friend, the therapist. Yeah, not my, not my best friend. Um, yes, well, I think that because again, you know, I think we all have duality to us as, as just humans. Um, now, to what degree, what variation do we have that? But I think that in order for Beth, Beth to have some sense of trust in her, Beth is not a, a, a stupid lady. She is quite the opposite. She is very astute. She's very successful and smart. Um, but in order for her to put her trust in this woman, she needs to feel like there is obviously an innate sense of, of care and professionalism. Mm -hmm. But I think where she starts to kind of smell a skunk a bit is in that undercurrent where she starts to kind of put the pieces together. Maybe not as quickly as we would hope, right? Because I think, again, she's working against against the tide because she's also working on herself. And I think sometimes that can put up blinders to us a bit when we're dealing with our internal stuff. Yeah, um, the outside family part. responsibilities. Exactly, family, friends. She's going through grief and anger and anxiety. Um, so again, when we're so caught up in this, how can we pay attention to all of this? Um, but she starts to pay attention to this once this stuff starts putting itself a little bit together. Then mm -hmm. she becomes aware of the outside world and, and this woman. Yeah. Did you find having such a rapid fire shooting schedule helped you make that transition or would it have been more beneficial if you could have done you know some of the more protected intense things and then eased into like her kind of seeing what's really going on yeah good question i mean who's to say right i mean i True. think that um <laughs> sometimes the universe hands us exactly what we need when we need it um as far as the shooting schedule is concerned um i think to a degree it's to the benefit of the script just because the script teeters so much between um, these kind of emotionally um, open, soft moments between her and her family and her friends to these very jarring, <clears throat> uncomfortable situations with this therapist. So in a way that uncomfortability kind of played into my, <laughs> into my hand for shooting these scenes um, that I had to be uncomfortable with. It was kind of like they were pushing me off the diving board and going, jump in. Yeah. And some of that was, was actually playing itself out in the scene itself because I had a just sit with it and navigate it, you know, in, in the present moment. Um, but I always, I always say, if you get any amount of time and I've, I've gone to set, you know, I've been called the night before to go to a set. I'll spend a few hours that night doing what I can to fill up my character tank of information. So I at least have something, some sense of character, some sense of um, foundation. So when I'm on set, I've got something to work with now. You know, diving into something like mental health, I think you've got to do a little bit more like work if you can. Um, but you got to just you got to jump when they say jump too. So, absolutely, that's a it's a good way to put it. <laughs> Didn't really have much of a choice. No, no choice, just dive. Yep, yep, exactly. Uh, I know LA got a little tighter with the restrictions and things, which I think just recently they're starting to yeah. loosen up a little bit. Yes, yeah, we just, I think that restaurants opened about a week or two ago, maybe even a week ago. Um, and, you know, of course, still distanced. Um, yeah. It's unfortunate. I mean, we are unfortunately been that one place in the country. I don't, where are you, where are you located? I'm in New York, but I'm north of the city, so I'm not right okay. in, in the okay. bad well, parts. <laughs> and you guys really had it in the beginning, too. I don't know, how, how is it there now? I mean, I'm in the suburbs. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty much, you know, we have the distancing and limited sure. people and businesses, all that, yeah. but... Um, 
I work yeah. from home primarily, so that's not so bad. But Got I just it. wanted to ask about LA because are, are you getting more strips? Is it starting to pick up? Yeah, or? yeah. So people are certainly shooting here. Uh, the shows that are based in Los Angeles are shooting. Um, but all auditions and meetings, those are all still via the Zoom um, and, and online tapes and things like that. So. Um, no real in-person meetings, uh, quite frankly, but I think that productions are at least starting to pick up. Um, they're very diligent. I mean, union standards are tested almost every other day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, set protocols are very strict. Um, they definitely spend the money to make sure people feel safe. And you have to, you just have oh, to. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's a scary time. And, and I just, you know, I'm so grateful when I do get to work. Um, but I just, I know it's been, it's been quite a, quite a, a year for so many people but at I'm least sure. we do have some content that we're we're able to kind of consume and keep us keep us still sane to a degree yeah right? that's kind of why i was asking is at some point studios have to start producing actors need to get back to work and all that kind yeah. of stuff because it's not just um it's not just the director the cameraman and the actors on screen there's hundreds of people in these productions hundreds of people you know it's such um that's the thing. I mean, it, it's when people watch a film, they just see the face, right? And they mm -hmm. see whoever's whoever's on camera, but they don't understand that there are so many people. This is such a collaborative art. It really, really, truly is. Every everything down to the person who's you know giving us lunch that day. I mean, everybody is um, holding hands on a project, and quite frankly, we are the people that you might see, but we kind of almost have the least amount of control too, because <laughs> we're just you know we we're these these vessels that carry the story forward, um, and hopefully with the with the director's vision. Um, and you know the DP's lighting choices and the sound person's job of picking up our voices and the sounds. You know we're we're carrying the story forward, but we're just we're just the people that you see. There's so many people that are involved in making every film. It's a major industry. A major industry. It sounds like you've had a pretty good handle on coping with COVID life. You managed to pivot to some writing, which is excellent, yeah. and you did yeah. get to manage to shoot something, which is also great. Yeah, I think I shot. Um, three projects. Um, oh, okay. But, but again, but very uh, limited amount of days. So sure. things have things have been cut and sliced maybe in half as far as our shooting schedule would necessarily be. Oh, yeah. that's good that you're still out there and doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trying to. Yeah. Oh, one other thing I wanted to ask, and this is kind of a departure, but the uh, sure. the house used for the exteriors, was that the same house you shot in? Yes, it actually was. It wow. was. We used that house for several different places. Um, yeah, you know, at first, I, and I had shot at that house for another film that I had done several years prior. And uh, and I just remember thinking, I don't know if this is Beth's house. It's quite big. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite enormous, as you can see. And it really is that big. Um, and, you know, my husband is a lawyer and I'm a, a businesswoman who deals with online security. And I'm thinking, my goodness, they're quite wealthy. But I think what it plays into as far as the narrative is, is concerned is that, you know, we all, I think, have these, which is very human, these understandings of people who have the exterior of their life looking a certain way. So mm -hmm. the big house, the big jobs, the success, you know, the family that's picture perfect. Um, I love the scene where, you know, there's a picture that's picked up and thrown against the wall <laughs> of, of my family. Um, because that metaphorically and physically is such a reminder that this external shell that we sometimes see is so not the reality of what things can be. Um, and Beth in all of her glory of her big house, when we meet her, she has this very fractured life. I think that she's kind of torn in all of these different places of her life between her job and then saving her daughter, what she's going through, um, and kind of keeping up with everything else except for herself, except for her own needs. Mm -hmm. um, and how you really can't take care of anybody else until you take care of this, you know, take care of yourself. So, um, so yeah, so at first I was kind of like, why is this such a big, a big location? <laughs> but it, it does play into the storyline of, of, you know, the, the expectations that we have of people based on what we see is not always accurate. You're definitely right. If you drive by that house, you think like, well, that's someone who has it all figured out. <laughs> exactly. They've got, and they've got to be happy. They've got to be happy. I mean, yeah. Be happy in a place like this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Sorry, I just had to ask. It was such a, yeah. an insane yeah, house. Yeah, no, that, that was a great house. And it was also, it served its purpose. We actually used that as a, as a therapist room as well. So that was a location in the house as well. Oh, that's excellent, um, especially given the, the extra protocols. 
Exactly. Yeah. It was all about saving time. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, thank you. I mean, if you want to tell everyone where they can find you online. Yeah. Sure. Um, I am, I do the social media thing, uh, as, <laughs> as much as I can, uh, at actress Kate Watson on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, great. And killer advice is coming out when? It just came out actually. Came out. It came Sorry. out on Friday, premiered. Um, and it, came, it actually played again last night, but I believe that you can find it on Hulu right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. Great. Well, thank you very yeah. much for taking the time. It was a lot of fun. And thanks for watching the film. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Good luck Stay with everything. Care. Thank you, you so too. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.